subscribe. Hello guys, welcome to RHCSA exam prep where we are focusing on Portman containers. On the first two videos, we did part one and part two, which focused on the introduction and registries. Today, we are focusing on port mapping. Before we go forward, I want to give an advice. Please do not go straight to answering questions on the internet. Go through the videos, have an understanding, then go through the questions. It will be easier if you follow the videos, practice, then you go through the question. There is no doubt that you will answer any question that is thrown at you. By the time you complete the videos, you see yourself being able to answer any question that you see in the internet. So without wasting any further time, please help us subscribe and uh, click on the notification bell, like our content and uh, keep the communications going so we can work together. Okay, going straight in, you see our not so good drawing here, right? So we can use it to introduce or define what pot mapping is in the containerization, right? So what is pot mapping? In reference to containers port mapping allows us to communicate using tcp udp with an application right running as a container from the container host and also from external servers what are we saying here we're saying if an application Call Apache, right? Apache or oh, HTTPD is running here on port 8080. The only way that we can communicate with this or get the contents of the web server is through what? Mapping a port from the container host that will map to this port right here or creating a link between this port and the port in your container host which is server a which is server a so mapping port 8080 to a port that is on your server then opening the firewall for external servers also to be able to connect right so let's say when building your container what you do is you create a port mapping and while creating that port mapping you declare that everything coming on zero 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 dot 0 .0 0.0.0.0 means all IPs, right? 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0, all IPs on 8090. On port 8090, I am redirecting it to 8080 in the container. Without this, the only way, without this port mapping, without the port mapping, right? The only way that you can access the web content is if you get a bus session or a shell into the container and you call 8080 <coughs> and you call 8080 so port mapping now allows us to call 1890 from the container host and we get the same contents that is inside the container and if we open a firewall if we open firewall right if we open firewall on the same port 1890 then what external servers will be able to use that firewall opening since it's listening on all IPs, it will take 
the IP of this server with the uh, protocol 1890 that it's trying to connect to, then it will communicate with 8080 in the container host, then get a response back through the same channel and go. Now, if a user from server A, that is the container host, wants to communicate, or wants to do a call to get the web content, that user also will simply, the user will simply do a call on 1890, 1890. Why in this, do a call, since it's listening to all IPs, you take that call, send it here, get the content, send it back to the container host. And that's why we said pod mapping allows us to communicate using TCP UDP with an application running as a container, which in our case here is Apache, from the container host and from external servers. Now let's do some practice work so last time we downloaded some images but i can still download it by doing a portman search portman search httpd you can use docker you can use docker httpd uh okay let's uh like using red hat dot access to practice the logins which if you haven't done that then you can watch part two of the video so I've copied it. Let's do a portman run. Portman run dash D dash dash name web one web server one right web one then we paste our name and run. Right, our container is running. So if we clear our screen and do a portman PS we will see our container name web1 running, right? So we don't see any ports here. That means our container is running. To be able to see the contents of web1, we have to get a bash shell into web1 to be able to see the contents. Because if I do a curl, let's first egg, egg. Let's first inspect our container to see what port is being exposed. So portman inspect uh, the container name. Then I pipe and grab. I don't want all the information. Pipe and grab for expose. Oh, grab dash A six six lines after the word expose dash i for case insensitive expose okay we see right here we so we see that port 8080 is being exposed on port 443 all right good i know my port now now if i do a curl curl localhost on port, sorry, on port 8080. I do not get any information because I'm doing a curl from my container host. Now let's try to get a bash shell into this container web one and do a curl on 8080. So if I get a curl, if I do a portman exec, let me be posting some of these commands right here. Portman inspect. Two. Okay. Control C. So I do a portman. Portman exec dash interactive shell name of the comp name of the container web one 
I want to get a bus shell. Right. You see, right now I've gotten a bus shell, which I am now in the container right here. If I cd to slash var www.html and do echo, let me say this is container web one. Then I redirect it to index dot html. Remember, I am in uh, var www.html. That's my uh, present working directory. So if I do an ls, I see it. If I do, if I see the back, I do a pwd. I'm in slash app root source. All right. So now if I do a curl local host on port 8080, you see right there, we see our web content. Now let me exit from the container. I am exiting now. So we've done a check and we are able to see our web contents, right? Now let's exit from the container. I have exited from the container. I am now as user Billy on the container host. Now I do the same curl. Right. I'll never be able to get it. Why? Because there is no communication link between a con this container right here, Apache that's running right here, and my host server, which is but normal. But this will not serve us any good as we want clients or external people to be able to grab the contents of our web server right here to grab to to grab the web content uh, to be able to use this web content so what do we do so if i do a portman ps portman ps we have one container running it's listening on nothing okay now let's create a second web server web server too now portman images let's see the images that we have downloaded I'm running so many commands that I can't even copy them in time. Okay. So we have one container running and when we do a Portman images, we see that we have one image downloaded into our system which is rel 7 httpd now you can run you can copy the image id or you can go without the image id so if i do a portman run dash d for detach mode dot dash name web server 2 web server 2 and I post, I paste the container ID and I run it. Oh, forgot the part. All right, let me create web server three. Web server three dash P will help us to map up 8080 or let me say 8090 or 8081. Anyone you, any port you want from the container host, let it be a port that is higher than 1024 let's do 8081 or 8080 still or 8090 let's keep it at 8090 8090 we map it to 8080 in the container so in other words we are saying that everything on the container host that's coming in with 8090 on all ips we are mapping it to 8080 inside the container. So with this declaration, let's create our web server tree. Our web server tree is created. If I do a portman PS, I will see three web servers, web server one and web server two. Uh, you can notice that there is no port right here. 
right there is no port right here what i was explaining right here you can see it on web server 3 in other words it is saying that any ip 0.0.0.0, .0, any ip coming with what looking coming through 1890 tcp i am listening to it and i'm serving it the content that is on my 8080 that is what this container is waiting for so it's waiting for any traffic right it's waiting for any demands coming in through 1890 from the container host then it will serve it the content that is inside the container now let's get what let's get a shell into the container and uh, create some web contents to test all right so uh we said portman exec it's good you type in your commands and not copy and paste portman exec dash it web server one web server three sorry web server three web server three we are getting a bash shell into web server three now if we do pwd we see it to slash var ww html if we do pwd you can see it right there let me clear my screen and uh, now let's put some content in there echo this is web server one no this is web server three serving you this content then i redirect it to index dot HTML do it up pen. All right. If I do an LS, this is our web content. Now, if I do a curl on local host on port 80, 80, 80. You see, this is web server to reserving us content. Now let's exit from the container web server three exit now i am now logging as billy okay let's do a portman ps first to see our containers so now this container right here is listening on every ip that comes with 1890 so if i do a curl localhost localhost means my server which is server one or i can put the ip if i want which the IP is 10.12.50. That's the IP of my server, 10.12.50.161, I think so. Right here, I can see it up here, 161 on port 1890. You see, I can see the con, I can see this is web server to serving you content now at the level of the container host i am able to see the content that is in here right that is in my container running on 8080 because of port mapping now using my browser which let's consider that my server b using my browser right here if I copy this, and run it on my browser, which is an external server, right? I don't get anything from my external server which is my laptop I don't get anything why because definitely I need to open a firewall I need a firewall rule that will let traffic through also so 
on the container host let me just say uh oh i need to be root to be able to open that firewall duplicate billy All right, firewall dash cmd dash dash list dash all. Nope, let me just add dash dash add dash port equals to 1890 on TCP dash dash permanent port added firewall dash cmd dash just reload okay it's reloaded now the port is open so since the port is open okay since the port is open let's now do a curl oh let's now do the same trans transaction on my browser right here oh it's already there you see once i open the connection it came this is web server 3. so you understand now that pod mapping allows you to access content that is stored within the container from the container host and from external sources. Before we go, I will just say the only thing I will add is this. Do not, I repeat, do not do any port ma mapping that is below 1023, right? because that's a privileged port. So, uh, port, let me say port one, right up to 1023, our privileged ports, and only root can assign those ports from port from port, um, let me say, 1024, right up to maybe even 60K, right? 60,000. Any user can assign it like Billy. Let's try to run web server 4 and map it to port 200 or oh, port 500. You see, error, rootless port, cannot expose privilege port 500. You can add net, you see, there's, you can't expose, you can't use this port because only root can use this port. And uh, that takes us to the end of uh, this section of port mapping. This is all about port mapping. If you see a, a, a dash P while running your container, just know that it's allowing, it's facilitating access to the contents that is inside that container, be it MySQL, be it uh, PHP, be it Python, be it anything. 